more than 1,500 Americans died from accidentally taking too much acetaminophen. The rise in alcohol-related deaths in the U.S. Avoid combining drugs. You should not take acetaminophen if you are a heavy drinker. Acetaminophen is often used in combination with painkillers. It could lead to too much acetaminophen. And the results can be deadly. Combining alcohol and over-the-counter medications that contain acetaminophen, also known as paracetamol, can be more dangerous than you might think, especially with chronic drinking. I'm Dr. Nock, PhD scientist, here to help you separate fact from fiction in health and nutrition. Acetaminophen is one of the most commonly used over-the-counter pain relievers and fever reducers. You'll find it in brand names like Tylenol and many cold and flu medications. And while it's safe to use as directed on the label, exceeding the recommended dose can be harmful, especially in the context of chronic alcohol use, and I'll tell you why. When you take acetaminophen, your body metabolizes it mainly in the liver, and most of it is safely processed, but a small portion is converted into a toxic compound called NAPQI. Under normal circumstances, after taking a recommended dose of acetaminophen, that's no problem at all, because your liver neutralizes NAPQI using some of its stores of a helpful antioxidant called glutathione. However, acetaminophen overdose can rapidly become very dangerous. In fact, acetaminophen-induced liver toxicity is the most common cause of drug-induced acute liver failure in the United States. It leads to over 50,000 hospital visits each year, which is more than 50% of all overdose-related acute liver failure, and it also accounts for approximately 20% of liver transplants. So stick to the recommended dosages and ask your pharmacist or doctor for clarification if needed. But what happens if we add chronic alcohol consumption to the mix? Well, as you may know, alcohol is also metabolized in the liver, and it's detoxified using some of those same enzymes as is acetaminophen. Chronic drinking can increase the levels of one of those enzymes, which is called CYP2E1, which can result in the production of more of that toxic NAPQI after you take acetaminophen. So chronic alcohol consumption changes your liver in ways that actually result in more production of the toxic NAPQI, and at the same time, alcohol consumption depletes your liver stores of that helpful antioxidant, glutathione, which is normally used to deal with the toxic NAPQI. Combining these two factors, regular, chronic consumption of alcohol, especially at higher doses, can increase the risk for serious liver damage. Symptoms of acute liver failure can include nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and jaundice or darker urine. You might be unusually sweaty. You may feel pain or sensitivity in your right upper quadrant of your abdomen. And if you notice these things, you need to consult a healthcare provider immediately because acute liver failure is a medical emergency. There is a treatment available that can help with acetaminophen-induced liver toxicity, but you need to go to the hospital. Now, this is really mostly a concern for people who regularly, chronically, consume high amounts of alcohol, especially when that's combined with higher dosages of acetaminophen. But higher than recommended dosages of acetaminophen on its own can also be dangerous. So in general, you should pay close attention to the instructions on the label of any medication that you're taking. As a warning, you should know that just because a supplement or medication is available over the counter does not mean it is necessarily safe. In fact, there are herbal supplements that are known to affect liver enzymes and which can therefore impact medications, including supplements such as St. John's Wort, Golden Seal, and some others, which have been shown to affect the clearance of as many as half of all prescription medications, including some cancer drugs, some antibiotics, some blood clot medicines, some heart medicines, and even some contraceptives, among others. This is why your doctor asks you what supplements you're taking. It's not out of curiosity, it's because some of those supplements may really affect some of your other medications, sometimes in critical ways. Since estimates show that between 40 to 60% of US adults with chronic disease use some form of dietary supplements, this is important. And of course, aside from the supplements, there can be toxicities from other over-the-counter medications beyond acetaminophen like ibuprofen, cough suppressants, allergy medications, and more, especially if not used in line with the label instructions.